Last week, Taylor Swift The Eras Tour tickets went on sale and there were problems. So 2.4 million people ended up getting tickets to the various concerts across the country. But many, likely tens of millions more individuals wanted the tickets. Uh, quoting uh, Taylor Swift to want to apologize th to those who couldn't get tickets, but then also to say to, to my fans who got them, you shouldn't have had to go through, I think the quote was several bear attacks to get the tickets. It was, it was really not ideal for anybody here. PR is very bad for everybody involved. What's the root cause? A lot of people are blaming Ticketmaster, but the root cause here is really about the demand and supply. At the prices the tickets were being listed for, the quantity demanded far exceeded the quantity supplied. People wanted these tickets at $100 or $200 and were willing to jump through hoops to get them. Now, there's not a great solution to this, right? The laws of economics, it's tough to fight when you run into these issues, right? They're, they're called laws. They're not called, you know, they usually work or suggestions of economics. They're, they're the laws of economics, right? The laws of demand, the laws of supply. What is the best way to avoid a hassle like this in the future? Uh, if I'm Taylor Swift and I'm trying to think about how to do this, there's a couple things. One, uh, I probably charge more for most tickets. And I think there's a trade-off here, right? She doesn't want to seem like she's price gouging for her fans. Uh, she's definitely a capitalist, right? I mean, she charges, she'll put out like five versions of the same album and charge a whole lot of money so kids will go and buy all of these things. I mean, she, she absolutely is trying to make profits, but I also think um, she wants to make sure her fans have access to the show. But I, I would charge more for most tickets. But then if possible, I would look to do a lottery style system for way cheaper tickets for everything else. A lottery system. You're not waiting in line. You're putting in your name. But with this lottery, I think it would be incredibly key to make sure they cannot be resold. The person who bought it is the person who gets the ticket. End of story. And that would require a little bit more work and the law... We'd have to check the laws to make sure that that's all okay within the laws of any given state. But this way, right, if you have people who really are big fans of Taylor Swift and they put their name in and they get it, okay, they have to go and they'll pay $25 or whatever. So some people are paying $400, but then you're selling a bunch of tickets at a way lower price. Um, require having a little bit of extra work because you're going to have to say, okay, this was a lottery winner. Let's check your ID as you come through the door. But that would be a way to help get people who want the ticket, aren't going to be willing to pay four, five, six, seven hundred dollars for tickets to be able to get into the show. That's not that different than what Hamilton tried to do. Hamilton, when it first came out, there were major issues with people being able to, able to obtain tickets directly from the theater. And then you saw tickets on the secondary market going for a lot more. So what did the musical Hamilton do? Well, they, they started to raise their ticket prices overall, but they still offered what they called their ham for ham promotion, where they did lotteries where a select number of people would get into the show for $10 each. I think that might be a good way to go forward. So my name's Matt Rosu. I try to make economic concepts fun and relatable, often using pop culture examples. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe to the channel to get notified when new videos come out. I'll see you in the next video.